visual. I'm unmuted. You know what? I think we may be live. Yeah. Oh, no. no, we're definitely <laughs> live. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh god, the screens are the the windows are so tiny on oh, this. No. Hello, welcome to the bonus roll. We are today wrapping up the uh, Green Cauldron Adventure Module Limited Campaign. Uh, kind enough to join us today is the writer of the campaign. Okay, I need to get this out of the way quick. Do you want us to refer to you as Tide, um, by the name you wrote uh, listed on the module, uh, Space Monster? Where do you want us to go with this? Or Twitter name, or any other name? Really, my real name's on the front of the module. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> on Drive Through, so uh, it doesn't really matter. You can call me Greg. Okay, that's fine with me. Um, and Zizva, uh, can I have you throw a uh, link to the module in the chat real quick for me? That is why uh, my eyes were darting around and there were clicking sounds. Actually, I'm on the way to do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> So uh, we don't have a ton of viewers right now, but I do appreciate you joining us because we had a lot of fun with this module, and I'm sure um, – oh, thank you even better. Uh, I'm sure everyone else has a couple questions, and I uh, figured, you know, giving you a chance to talk about it would at least only be fair for uh, you letting us stream this thing. Oh, I thought that was a problem for me. All right. So um, – Let's just go ahead and launch this off because I know it's Saturday and we all want to, you know, have our Saturday. Uh, I also know it's like bloody early for you. Uh, so I definitely appreciate you being here. Uh, let's go ahead and launch this off with uh, the Dungeon Master for uh, the Green Cauldron Limited Campaign, uh, Zizva. Uh, go ahead. I mean, the most important question, and I note on here that... Um, you illustrated them yourself. Where did the fang shrooms come from? They're adorable and creepy, and I love them. <laughs> the uh, you know, honestly, I don't even remember where it came. From. Uh, other than plant monster as being the theme, obviously for all this, it was uh, it just came. Oh well, we have to have a mushroom. <laughs> Seem fitting, mushroom cave. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the mushroom cave, exactly. <laughs> Those things jacked Cladic up bad. Yeah. <laughs> it, which surprised me, honestly. I, I had figured that two of the monsters would be really walkthroughs. Um, the, the Fang Shroom and the Pitch Rike. I mean, they were um, actually... What was your... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. I was just going to follow up and say they're actually really good... Um ones for a starting adventure that can have level one or level two because you know there's actually you could just stop and rest and move on and there's not really like a ticking clock in this game so much i mean and, until it's introduced and then there is but um they're actually really good um leveling monsters they're not gonna necessarily accidentally kill you but they would slow you down they would make the characters uncomfortable they have the creepy vibe yeah, and and to to your point there that when I'm running an adventure, I like to to give players that time to rest. Uh, you know, even specifically setting up rooms for them to go to that they can barricade and and be safe in in horrible dungeons. Oh yeah, those are definitely needed. And so, like Dungeon of the Mad Mage, um, <laughs> definitely needs a few more break rooms. <laughs> yeah, Tomb of Annihilation has like one. <laughs> All right, uh, Honeycut, you were going to ask something, I think. Yeah, what was your uh, for for the for those uh, fang shrooms? Um, why, why the the uh, hit to Dax? Uh, really, I I wanted something to be a that could take a player out of the team, uh, and and really that's a super effective way to do it without actually just straight out killing them. Um, it, um, it it makes it. You know, you drop one player off, and everyone else gets scared. Oh, why didn't you just use something like paralyze or something like that? Because uh... um, I'm a giant nerd, and you know, talking <laughs> sounds cool. That's that actually fits, and that's fair, yeah. Uh, from what I've seen, but no, um, paralyze is a little bit. E I mean, you get players <laughs> paralyzed uh, frequently, especially in low to mid level, where you have uh, monsters with uh, hold person and stuff like that, and 
doing it this way basically meant there's no easy out. You have to stop and rest. Yeah, yeah, I'm very it was definitely effective and fun. So I have a question. I I know you sat through most of the game the games that we streamed, and we really appreciate you showing that up. Did you have a favorite moment from when we were running through this? You know, the one that really struck out to me um, was when you you actually attacked the uh, uh, Hydrophy Titan. Mm -hmm. uh, it, because, you know, with the, the warnings that I gave at the very start of the adventure, and, you know, even in the, the three scenarios that are written up in there, it's like, you know, you, you're not going to win. <laughs> like, uh, you know, there's, there's really no chance. This thing's 300 feet tall and you're level, you know, maybe two or three. Uh, you're going to get smashed. And um, uh, I'll say this is one of two times that I've watched the adventure. The other one, I actually played as a player in it. Um, and uh, and in the other one, they attempted to do the same, but they got killed <laughs> like almost <laughs> immediately. Uh, you know, it just stomped. I wasn't the DM on it. Um, it uh, it was much much more powerful and dangerous. And it, this is something that I really like in. Uh, well, say this, put it this way: I'm a, a monster movie fan. Uh, you know, a big Godzilla, oh, Mothra, yeah. uh, all those kind of things. I like the kaiju uh, to be a, uh, a impossible foe. And if you think about all those monsters, you know, some of them are the inscrutable hero to it, like Godzilla is. And uh, and that's really what I want here is is not necessarily something that's just going to smash everything and kill everyone. It's something that doesn't really care about the people. It's walking through. Um, yeah. Now, you know, any DM can run it as they want, but you know, I like this is what I my picture in my head was. When I made. See, I can see this as part of a larger campaign where players later come back to take on this big thing as it is broken out of the Green Cauldron and is starting to rampage across uh, the countryside. Yeah, absolutely. It would be fantastic. I, guess... I, I find it difficult for me to write a second part, so I can't say I'd be opposed <laughs> if somebody else did. <laughs> Uh, I gotta say, like, right there, the part you were talking about us with them, us fighting him, that was one of my favorite parts, too, where um, Cladic is basically standing in front of this giant uh, giant thing. Defensive action. Okay, guys, get running. This is my job. And just gets down. Yeah. I managed to roll a, 20, uh, a natural 20 on my death save, wake up, climb out of the thing's eye, mouth, throw itching powder in its face, and then run across its back and swan dive into the lake to swim out of there. And one in 20 chance, we almost had a, just a squished, crunched cladic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was definitely going to chew you next turn. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, uh, this was a one shot. It's expected to lose a character every now and then. It's like, oh my god, I get to keep Plotic. Yay! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay. Yeah, Reggie was really, really uh, hoping you'd, you'd make, it out, make it out of there. He was sad to have to run away. <laughs> With Plotic being yeah. uh, so chewed on. Uh, we've at, we've talked about the mushroom and the um, uh, the phylo, but one of the things we didn't really get much screen time was the dryad in the um, wood shop. I think it was. Uh, how much did we miss oh, by yeah, the uh, table. basically me getting charmed and walking away from that? You know, uh, I've got the random table up on my side, and those were thrown into that without much thought. Oh, that's uh, fine. Be totally on it. <laughs> I mean, random encounters and stuff like that can really uh, make a game and add a lot of flavor to it. It's one of those. Um, it can even spawn off an entire adventure all on its own. So yeah, there's a, a another item on that um, random table with a. Um, oh, let me get the wording right here. Uh, it's a frog with a pipe. Um, <laughs> Which, which really, I, I was hoping would come up in any of these adventures. I hope it does for somebody because that could lead on to so many questions and a whole another sub adventure. Yeah. Oh, we got three of them. Like we got that. the goblin and the dead bird. We got the axe beak, and we got the forest nymphs. 
See, there's yep. so much in this that's a great launching point for like a full actual campaign that um, mm -hmm. I really like. I'm just now starting my read through. I did not read through it before this, so I wouldn't have any spoilers or out of character information. Um, and life is crazy. Um, but uh, I'm starting to read through on it, and I'm looking at it, and it's like there is so many jumping off points. This is a great start for a like an opening campaign. Um, oh yeah, I could definitely do that. So with um, a lot of people nowadays, like Wizards of Coast is fo focused almost exclusively on having um, their modules set in uh, the Forgotten Realms, Faerun, on the Sword Coast. Where can you see the Green Cauldron kind of nudging into like the different settings like Faerun, uh, Ebron, uh, stuff like that? You know, the... the um... The adventure that I ran, well, uh, my own home-built adventure, it was a pretty long, epic 14-month uh, run-through that I did with a bunch of my players. I did everything in the Moonshay Isles, and that's kind of where I pictured this. It, it really same, seemed to fit with some of the, the wilder areas of that. I can definitely see that, especially with like the Meteor Strike and other things, like making stuff go weird periodically there. Yeah, well, that makes sense. If they did I, I think it this could Eberron. drop into just about any place. If they did it in Eberron or something, it'd be easy to be like something from the war exploded and damaged an area, like instead of an earthquake or something. Oh, easy would, to swap that out. I would totally throw this into the Mornlands and like, you know, have y'all do a, um, hey, go and scavenge this area. We just saw a meteor fall into there and get us some good star metal. That would make sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, among the other things, this was our first limited campaign. We are planning on doing future limited campaigns, uh, but there, this was another first. This was the first time we had Equilibrium, who has been our longtime moderator, uh, join us in an actual campaign. And I would like to say one more time, Equilibrium, welcome to the bonus cast. Yay, we all love Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> right. Also, my first Twitch DMing, too. Yeah. Uh, we do have a plan for everyone else to do limited campaigns. I believe uh, Tux, the person who plays Fair Deer, is going to be doing our next limited campaign. Am I correct on that? Oh, my God. Okay. One shot, probably with him. Okay, hopefully. Uh, I've actually, never DM'd before at all, so this will be an interesting one because he gets to like um, world build with you too and mm -hmm. do like um, a prep. So, like first time DM doing um, world building, so that'll be fun. So, I want to jump back all the way to the very beginning of this. That first uh, set uh, village. Um. Uh. There's a lot of behind the scenes on that one that had a lot of work. Uh, that one really set the personality for Cladic, Um because I intend originally intended for him to be a conquest uh, paladin. Um, and then he went in and I saw people complaining about not having enough food, and I immediately went back to that old story I heard when I was a kid about the stone soup. And right then, it's like, I just latched onto that for Cladic. But I know there were a couple different ways that that could have gone, that the um, villagers could have rioted or um, a lot of other fights. How? What other, you said you've seen this played through a few, uh, once or twice other times. How did the village setting go in those uh, other viewings that you had? Much more violent is the, the real answer <laughs> it uh a couple of the players in that went including myself just went into some of the houses to see if they could scrub together some food for these people uh, uh they talked about having one of the horses that are on the uh, town map killed for food uh, the um uh, one of the sorry one of the villagers did get smacked pretty hard by one of the the soldiers there um it, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it, it didn't go deep. I'll say it. It went more. Um, let's say the the whole part of the module for that maybe took twenty thirty minutes at the most. Oh, 
I mean, that was almost our entire first episode, as I remember. Um, yeah. I think we had a little bit yeah. of an advantage. Yeah, we had a incredible. cobalt and a druid there, so. I mean, having the big yeah. minotaur stand right in the middle of the two forces where they'd have to go into him to fight, and the, you know, um, druid, you know, shaping things and restoring, like, I figured it would make sense they'd have, like, some food stores or something underground or, you know, that they just couldn't reach, so. It, it makes sense. And part of the, uh, I'll say some background here, I, um, when I started writing not specifically writing this adventure i was going to start writing a different thing entirely was a motivation theory in the workplace book um and when i'm starting to think about that and and thinking about writing adventures really my my true love in in any sort of writing is the fantasy side uh, i'm thinking about motivations and you know the motivations of villagers the motivations of the monsters the motivations of the players that are going to be coming into this it it matters to to grab people to get that motivation understood. I would say that there is a very strong undercurrent of uh, hunger motivation throughout this. Um, uh, not just in the obvious of the um, the villagers being hungry and the the monster being hungry, but uh, the uh, plant infection sprouting from the stomach is also alluding to the need to consume um just the critical theorist in me picked that up really quickly and really appreciated that follow-through line on there yeah that makes sense uh and i don't think i thought of that that way before so oh, no, <laughs> that's I mean, a good idea we all that's work symbolism yeah we all work symbolism into stuff even without realizing it so um but yeah, yeah no right. it and, was and i great. really do love that grabber monster monster sorry <laughs> Um, one more thing on the first, oh, I guess two more things on the first town. I do like that it details out like all the living residents because then when players, you know, started interacting with people are, you know, who can I round up? Who can I find out what resources we have? Like, it's easy to see like the connections of the people and their family units and stuff since they're all detailed out and, you know, not running to a name generator or anything in the middle. That's fun. <laughs> I, and yeah, then, and this really was intended to be a a very new GM capable adventure um, for that kind of thing. You know, throw extra de descriptive text in, throw little details like that, uh, just to help out people. And it's very and and it is linear, but having that forked path right at the start, kind of. Um, we all know adventurers go off the path, definitely. <laughs> so giving them kind of a built-in way to, to take that either way and then get back and get into the adventure was not only really new player friendly, but for experienced players, it, it helps with the feeling of feeling more railroaded in non-homebrew campaigns like modules than you normally would be. It definitely was a really good... Um choice uh on how to include that because it it you know that thing where like the kid says i don't want to eat my broccoli it's like do you want to have two more bites of broccoli or three more bites of broccoli and it's like you're getting them to agree to the broccoli but they don't realize they're they're doing that they have the illusion of choice are you bringing hunger back into this again i always i am always hungry <laughs> he's an english major <laughs> Uh, Even the axe beak was after food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I, really I recognize as, as an English major, I could sit down and tell you that this was about anything I wanted and make up stuff to make it make sense if needed, just because that's what academia is, apparently. As a, uh, a having taken philosophy courses, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so as far as the second part, when going to the caves, um, there were a lot of weird, like weird crystals and stuff because that was my last episode because I couldn't play the last one. But um, lots of the crystals in there just were really cool. Do you have any other like concepts that you had like before you had implemented them for the other crystals? Yeah, and I struggled with the crystals quite a lot. Um, I had thought of all sorts of possibilities for them. I I had written them, then removed them at one point, uh, re-added them back in. 
I had thought about um, uh, various ways that they could be used with light and shining through and creating all sorts of things, including a way for the party to kill the, the big giant monster at the end of it. Um, it just, nothing really fit for what I wanted to do until I said, okay, well, let's just take it back to simplicity. Yeah, no, I get that. I certainly had fun collecting the crystals. I was surprised no, no one collected good. the gold or gems from the island. I <laughs> regret that so much. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back. You can you can start that you know, that run back into there for the second part. <laughs> it was very yeah. much a um, Cladic wouldn't have thought of doing it, and I think uh, Reggie was a little distracted by Cladic, you know, walking up to the village of hostels. Um, I really enjoyed having the uh, druid do the cave exploration. That was, um, I really, ha I was very happy to have someone other than Cladic do that. A little out of their element? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, canon-wise, with you not there, you just turned back into a cave lizard, and you were like, I'm going to check out this branch that we missed near the start, make sure everything's safe. And then they were gone for 10 minutes, and they came back all battered and bruised and bloody. And oh. they're like, don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we missed uh, one part in the caves where uh, there was the whistling part of the tunnel. Um, um, they, uh, they to that, I think. Oh, we edged up against it, but we decided to go the other way around. Oh, okay. The yeah. lizard went through, I thought, yeah. but it wasn't it enough through, yeah. to trigger a, a collapse or anything, because there is that section that collapses. You can trigger it ahead of time. Yeah, the tiny yeah. little lizard probably yeah. wouldn't have set much off. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, sorry. Readjusting my position. Uh, yeah. Let's see here now. Um, I know Zizava left a really long review of the thing, and th from what I understand, it was glowing. Have you gotten some really uh, gotten more positive reactions from anyone yet? Uh, nobody has been negative. I'll say um, I haven't had any other reviews. Um, uh, and putting putting it this way, I'm not concerned about the sales of this thing. <laughs> Um, it hasn't had a huge amount, and not that I'm complaining about that. I just want it out there. Uh, in fact, I was going to release it for free at one point, but actually one of the people that it follows me on Twitter said, don't, don't do that. Make it at least, you know, something that you get out of. And I'm like, all right, you know, I have to pay for the art at least. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it, um, uh, yeah, no complaints and no reviews either, except for, for one, one important well, one. I, I feel like we got our money out of it. You know, I like, I definitely think um, just doing them um, for free for publicity doesn't necessarily get people like the opening that they want all the time. Yeah. It and kind of uh, locks them in a bit. Yeah. People yeah, start and to expect Having it for done free. sales before, sometimes. Oh, sorry. It's it's hard not to interrupt here. And oh, yeah, no, uh, no worries. You know, that's the nature of online conversations. Um, it, I've, I've done sales in the past, and sometimes when you offer something for free, they walk away from it not thinking that it could be anything good. So, you know, even having a small price on things is enough for people to think, hey, maybe I, I'm getting a great deal or some value out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um that remind I can't remember the brand it was. There was this vodka that um, just was not selling well. Um, I used to work at a liquor store, so um, and it was low cost. People are like, "Oh, it's cheap. It can't be any good," and they're passing it up. The manager raised the price on it by like I want to say twenty percent, and the stuff just would not stay on the shelf after that. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. It's all motivation theory, and, and now I'm, I'm paging through the adventure while we're talking here and seeing things like the vultures, and it's coming back to that hunger theme here over and over again. I, I'm gonna have to re-examine my motivation. <laughs> Hunger's a powerful motivator. 
Yeah, it is yeah. definitely one of the key driving factors, and um, motivation, like you said, is a huge key in stuff like this. Um, I think that may be partially why uh, Reggie didn't grab any gold, was that we were more focused on survival needs. Uh, hunger, shelter, water, and s- those were actually all brought together in the cauldron there. There was the village for shelter, there was the water for, uh, you know, hydration, and then there was the hunger of the beast, so. That's Sorry, good. critical theorist. Yep, well, that's fair. <laughs> One thing I tried to bring in that we didn't really get time for, and part of that is my fault because I was going to make everyone town trinkets, is you also do these um, town inspiration um, prompts once a day on Twitter. And we'd had each character like pick a town they were from so they would have things to talk about during the campfire. And we had, um, we did have Bruce um, who was from Amanin talking about brewing things and you know put some berries away for later but i mean cladic uh, mentioned a little bit uh he was from i can't remember the name of it the um the gladiatorial town vinegar yes that's it um being a guard at one point like his backstory is that he was a um he was being trained to be a guard in Vinger, but kind of like, you know what, I'm going to go out and see the world first. And so that is why he's out getting good at fighting and why he's a conquest paladin because of the whole, like, hey, behave. That's cool. Uh, you know, it was Vinger. Um, I've got my, I, I kept a list of every one of those town posts I have for <laughs> no good reason. Uh, I believe it. And, uh, I just had to do a quick search there. I mean, you could take that, release that itself as yeah. like a 100 town uh, prompt PDF. That's true. Actually, I'm I'm coming right up on my 200th post here pretty quick for that. 200, 200 days uh, nice. in a row. Let's see. So I mean, if you go on like one of the D&D Reddit, it's like you get a lot of following from that. So uh, Kurt, you, sorry, could you repeat that? Even if you go on like one of like the D and D subreddits, like you'll find a lot of following from that. I mean, just posting uh, that information. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. So EQ did um, Lightseeker, and I'm probably saying that slightly wrong. So he Let's did um, he did Dump Mirror with the um, previous skeletal horde. So so he did kind of oh, a yes, cleric. So. <laughs> oh, cool. I did mention my name during one of the combats, regretting that I left that town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I feel like that shaped your story. From Upwood. That shaped your story a little bit too, because it's like you know, you're from a town that's used to guarding against the undead. You know, your your name theme of being a light seeker and everything goes goes good with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> you managed to get you know, that wa- that water ganasi in too. There was a lot of swimming going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Like they uh, kept running to the water like a little six year old kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, swimming pool. It's like, wait, there are triggers. There's things. Stop. <laughs> uh, jumping around, uh, how many of those uh, pitcher plants were in there? Because like. We saw the one, and then we were basically like, okay, stick to the walking path. Oh, the pitch rikes. Yeah. Um, I don't think I defined any... I only put it in one specific spot in the adventure. Okay. Um, My thought actually was that most of them would exist on the trails. That that really, that is their their environment. Um, You know, they're going to want to... Yeah, I think so. Uh, and and that that really um, seemed to be far deadlier than I would have expected as well. Uh, in every time I've seen it, I really enjoy uh, kind of monster traps like that. Like the it was kind of a mimic in in its own way. I find it really interesting they didn't try to kill it at the end either in this adventure. We were a little distracted. But the main point we, was... We thought it was just a pet. Yeah. 
<laughs> Besides the original, so. Um, yeah, no, Cladic's whole plan was like, oh, okay, and cut through the uh, thing and throw a rope down there. Uh, like, yeah, fell off of the... It's like, oh, that looks like it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> The, the other adventure where we had this actually had it pretty much entirely closed um, and uh, and was starting the suffocation of the player, which was even nastier. Eesh. No. <laughs> that does sound nasty. Fun. I do like that little <laughs> spike at the bottom. That is definitely a nice touch. I figured yeah, the crowbar gave, you know, too. using their equipment gave them a little bit of a boost, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bob's a turner, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was almost out of turns. It's like three turns to close. Yeah. So. Um, but going back yeah. to the Philo thing, I had not seen the cover. Um,. And I had not read it, so I saw that island in the center, and I was like, oh, it's a giant turtle, yes! And, like, the next thing I did was pick up uh, Reginald and just huck him across the water. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Because I knew I was I... not going to let this campaign in without throwing that cobalt at least once. Fair. Oh, good plan. He um, threw me twice, was it? Or I, was just the ones? He picked you up and carried you around a lot. Yeah. But he didn't throw you until that. I think he's a li yeah. he, he, he knows that he's a big, strong guy, and so he's a little careful with his tiny friends. But he got <laughs> excited when he saw the island. He's like, go, Reggie, go! <laughs> and theoretically, <laughs> I should have probably triggered it waking up a little bit earlier, but I wanted y'all to kind of get to experience the village and like the people setting out on the rafts and stuff to kind of get more of a full taste of the adventure. So we kind of delayed it waking up a turn or two. <laughs> Which I think was perfectly fine. Um, my, my thought originally was that it wouldn't wake up until people were actually on top of its head. Um, and there'd be no effect you know, other than this gigantic thing coming up to scare the crap out of people. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the things I honestly feel a little bad about was taking with the, with the one survivor we managed to rescue, giving him my great club and going like, here, I need a second. Have fun. <laughs> 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 And I mean, since he ended up being someone you had to fight later, that ended up being to your benefit. Yeah. But <laughs> it, it definitely there was some questionable, what, what am I doing with this going on? <laughs> uh, EQ, I think you were trying to say something. Go ahead. Uh, no, not really. But I do have a question about plant parasite, I guess. So. Oh, the grabber. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've looked at it time to time looking at the VOD and I was like I wonder if there's a way to maybe prevent the parasite from spreading throughout the body. Is there like a way to cure it? Say greater restoration or is it intended to kill the NPC? Could um, a player get infected? That's a good question. I actually have it up on my screen here with the, whole, the full um, uh, stat block. Uh, I would say a greater restoration would do it. Uh, in yeah, it, it um, or maybe even a control plants. I mean, y'all are oh. y'all are approaching this as levels like one to two. You might be three when you finish, kind of thing. So yeah. definitely, if this was part of a longer campaign, there'd be options for your characters to you know hit like level five, get stronger spells, do research. Um, travel around and maybe, you know, um, meet some um, green hags or something and talk to them about plants, you know. <laughs> See, my only <laughs> thought on that was um, using uh, the paladins lay on hands to cure diseases. Maybe, but I was way out of lay on hands at that point. I was using that as triage of myself <laughs> after getting <laughs> shoot on. In, um, I know I, I'll keep going back to somebody else's adventure here, but uh, it's worth noting the um, 
the other party that played through this after they had escaped the tunnels, escaped the, the cauldron, they went back to Puli only to find out that every uh, villager there was infected with the, the grabber plant. Um, oh, yeah, so was that because Albert went through? Um, yeah, canonically. Uh, I don't remember how that worked with them. Be because with um, Albert had the grabber corpse um, of his brother, and heading right. that way yeah. may have been infected. I didn't even think yeah, about something perfect. like that. Yeah, but then again, Cladic wouldn't have thought something like that either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see Reginald thinking of it, but he's not really a, a, like a healer of any kind. The um, the grabber actually came from my that that big epic adventure that I played previous, um, where there was twins that had this infected them and uh, uh, ended up being a, a horribly nasty uh, movement scenario, because this thing really is physics based that. If it grabs something it, that it can't, it, that it weighs more or it's fixed, it it's pulled towards it. But if you know this thing it, as a full size human grabs a hobbit or a halfling, and it'll just eat you, um, drag them fastly towards yeah. them. Uh, and it it had a huge map when we played through that, and it ended up just being fantastic. Nobody knew what to do. Uh, that reminds me of one of my favorite <laughs> fights from Second Sight Agency was uh, when the agents were going up against uh, one of the Sorosworn uh, that had the harpoon arms. And I had so much fun just oh, like, yeah. oh no, it drags you across the field. Her monk was like, no, I'm helping by staying impaled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds excellent. <laughs> Uh, only in D and D. Yeah. So, um, so I made a background with a uh, dungeon draft for the stream. I think you use that in the um, book illustrations too, right? Or am I mistaken on that? Uh, sorry, I'm. I'm did you did you end up using dungeon draft on? Um... Oh yeah, for for creating the um, all the maps. Uh, uh, yeah, it was dungeon draft for all those. I thought um, I recognized those assets. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, which my first experience with it. Yeah, that's why I did the background with that. I like that because you can like if you buy them, you can put them in published stuff. It's got the terms for that, so that's fun. Uh, I'd start hand by hand drawing every map, um, and it was just kind of ridiculous. And, and of course, I was doing it on paper, um, which you know, even the 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 monsters of the uh, Frondlid and the Fang Shroom and, and Pitchrite. I every all of those were originally drawn on paper and then uh, scanned in and colorized and uh, a lot of effort to them. Um, I'm realizing the limitations of my time more than anything else to get these things done. Mm -hmm. You're always like, oh my god, I have so much time to work on this, and then you sit down and like 20 <laughs> minutes later, like, okay, well, I have to go and do something else now. Yeah, no, yeah, pretty much exactly. And this this took me about forty days to write this in total. That is how many rewrites like uh, did you end up going through? Because I know when I'm writing a short story, I generally will do at least two rewrites and then just like, nope, I'm done with this. Honestly, zero. Uh, uh, and I I wrote this um, in. In the the template, it's it's presented in the way the one you've seen, top down, um, and doing the the formatting and everything while I was writing it. Um, I, I don't know why oh, nice. it, it may be the worst idea to do, but it actually helped me keep to the theme. I have so much trouble with the um, the official uh, Chicago style that they want us to use because I have been trained on MLA since day one. Uh, in all my writing classes, so I'm having to unlearn everything that I know and relearn it. So um, no, it makes I'm, that makes that all the more impressive to me. I did like how much colorization is in it, like the alternating blue and white, and like the um, 
the red and the black and the yellow to break up the text blocks and stuff that that really helped make it clear to read yeah yeah and again as much as i could towards a, a new gm who really needs that help initially um without naming names there's a a kickstarter big adventure with all sorts of a, a unique scenario that i purchased recently and i in in order to run it for my own players i had to rewrite about a third of it and reorganize and and it was ridiculous and once i got through that I, I went to this and said like i can't do that to people people need to to the gm needs to have it fun um and if you have to rewrite and reorganize everything then it's not I was wonderfully organized and i think like that being your first thing you put out you're really setting the bar for yourself that way oh that's horrible no i'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be screwed for the next <laughs> oh, i mean you just need to labor things like beginner intermediate advanced and then just never do a beginner one again <laughs> <laughs> the loophole method <laughs> no, <it's okay. sighs> Um, let's see here now. What else do I want to, uh, let's see. Talk about those, those, those. Um, so yeah, did you, I know you said you didn't want to talk about the, um, Kickstarter that you just, that you, a second ago, but is there anything that you want to plug that either you've had a really great experience with or that you have coming up that you would want to talk about? Um, uh, I'm going to continue on the, uh, the daily posts, obviously. Um, really my push is towards for a, a year of that so people going on to my twitter would be fantastic uh i've got one other idea that i'll give th a three-word explanation of for what my next write-up and next adventure would be that is emotional support demons um <laughs> and, and we'll see how that goes <laughs> you know that got me thinking about familiars uh and like how popular they're getting lately like we have um stibbles is coming out soon i think if it's not already out i'm i'm working yes. on my own like familiar um module that i need to get around to actually finishing up and uh showing to people and stuff like that uh the frondlings um what size are they are they like familiar compatible or were they just like small humanoid halflings ish oh frondlets uh i had pictured them as slightly shorter than the average human not okay. not by much though um uh now i'm canadian so i'm converting metric here but it um roughly five feet tall okay see okay. i can see like a frondlet baby then as like a familiar for like a druid or um a nature-based wizard that would be adorable and growing out of a garden yeah, the little Groot-like frondlets. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, I just love all their thorns on those. Those just oh, those, those thorns <laughs> jacked Cladic up. That's another theme there, isn't it? Yeah, thorny creatures. <laughs> Because, I mean, like, they didn't have to, like, stay in humanoid shape. They can bend and twist, so, I mean, you they can, could just be little thorn balls if they wanted to. <laughs> you can have a lot of fun the, with uh, an alternate physio. Fantastic hidden. Oh, yeah. sorry. Go oh, ahead. no, go ahead, please. I know what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, oh uh, well, that's fine. Uh, I was saying that um, the frontless also could be very much adapted into hidden creatures uh, in a, a jungle-like environment like this. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, having a, a thorn suddenly swipe into the, the pathway people are walking. I love those alternate physiologies that, like, is just, it looks humanoid, but it's just not in the same kind of physicality. Uh, so... I instantly fell in love with those little guys. Um, I, w I would love to see them, like, running with, like, a pack of twig blights. Yeah. Uh, and, that you know, it was originally when I was going to write this, I had thought that it would go on to... Um, sorry, I'm losing the name of the, the official... DM's Guild. Um, and, uh, and then I would have to be using things like twig blights and this, the standard built-in D&D &D characters. 
and part of what I wrote here was to avoid all that. Uh, have no all new creatures that nobody knows about, all new locations that nobody is aware of, um, and make it uh, really unique and go up on drive through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been some issues with uh, the DM skill in the past that have made me reconsider putting stuff out there. Um, but drive through seems to be a good one. Um, I gotta ask that uh, fifth edition of fantasy logo in the lower right. Where did you f- like? Did you have to design that yourself, or did you get a copy of that from someplace? It um, came up in uh, uh, what's the name of the Discord? It, it was the RPG Writers Workshop, um, uh-huh. and I was saying I, I need a logo here. I can't use the official one for you know legal reasons. And um, and somebody else posted that and said it had been used repeatedly. Uh, and then I had spotted on other modules on drive through. Okay. So it's out there and who to use, sounds like. All right. Um, so, yeah, uh, everyone, we've been uh, talking with, uh, it's been about 45 minutes. I think we can probably start wrapping this up. Uh, if anyone had any other questions, comments, thoughts, stuff like that feel free to um i'm going to start prepping the outro stuff which is basically me talking for like five minutes <laughs> <laughs> that's our theme song. i guess a good, i guess a good player question for everyone to sign off is where would you see like your character being used again like is there a setting or a theme or a module like if your character went somewhere else where would you see them go um, I mean, wherever you can find cool things to turn into alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of had this vision for Reginald eventually becoming a, 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 an artificer. And, oh, that uh, awesome. Getting a gun. Going down that route. Cobalt's um, got a gun. But, exactly. But I, I don't know uh, where I would actually see him is setting wise like he could be an Aberon, he could be anywhere he could just be an inventor of his own kind um so it's hard to say what uh, setting he'd be in or anything like that uh, and cladic opens a soup restaurant and... <laughs> i can see cladic just kind of wandering around barovia for a while not sure where he is or why he's there and eventually straw just kicking oh, yeah, him yeah. out <laughs> <laughs> I, I envision Cladic eventually becoming a uh, a high level uh, chef. For I actually some created I don't know why. a uh, food domain cleric uh, or feast domain. Go for it. <laughs> and what about it, you, EQ? It, you, it, would it, you be wandering Barovia with Cladic, or what? Would, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a possibility because you see, with my characters. I still have my first, my very first character. They never disappear, <laughs> so I just keep reusing them for campaigns and campaigns and build a backstory on that more and more. So I don't know if I ever get invited to another game. Licht might show up over there. <laughs> well, I mean, you might yeah. show up as a guest in some other campaign, <laughs> maybe. Probably. Some, some certain other campaign. Let's not make promises that I haven't written the script for yet. Uh, Greg, <laughs> right, sorry, you were about to say something and then we kind of got half talked over you. I'm sorry about that. Please go ahead. Oh, it, it's just me making more dumb jokes. It's oh, hey, totally I love fine. dumb jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's more about uh, opening a restaurant with the soup and uh, you know the, the standard waiter, there's a, a rock in my soup rather than a fly. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I had originally envisioned him being Conquest Paladin because he's from the. Uh, he was a guard at the uh, the Gladiator, Gladiator. Um, city, Arena. but um, like the idea of him cooking and stuff, I could see him eventually retraining to feast the feast domain that I created. Which is a heavy armored combat, like literally your ability is like during a short break, you can make snacks for your uh, teammates to give them like resistances and stuff. And that feels very classic. Does, yeah. Blessed food. So um, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this. We've been going for about almost just shy of an hour. Which is really about what I was hoping for. Uh, everyone, thank you for showing back up for this. Uh, 
Uh, Greg, uh, I'm sorry if I said that. Wait, hold on. I'm jumping between things. No, yeah, Greg, fine. sorry. I was questioning yep. myself, and I shouldn't do that publicly. <laughs> I, I should just do that no, privately. Okay. Uh, anyway, thank um, you for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate you oh. sitting down and taking the time to talk with us. No, I I enjoy it. It's been a long time since I was I've been interviewed, um, and uh, uh, I appreciate it. I, well, honestly, well worth I, it with I, this. I like I like people having fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> all good. Uh, this adventure was great. Uh, we are going to continue recommending it to people, especially new DMs, uh, for a good while. And uh, I look forward to hearing the announcement from you that, hey, I have done 360 of these town prompts, and I am now <laughs> releasing them as a PDF. I think that's an excellent idea. All right. So, uh, everyone who's v joined us today, thank you so much. Uh, please follow uh, Greg on Twitter at, at the tide goes out. Uh, Ziz, if you want to throw that into the chat for me real quick, I'd appreciate it. Um, you I will can... just repost the part that's got the Twitter link to the creator and the module. That way they can find them both easy. Perfect. Uh, you can follow us, uh, the uh, bonus roll, uh, at at bonus roll, uh, where we do announcements of uh, our game starting, heads up that, hey, uh, one of our games is going on hiatus for a bit, and stuff like that. Um, you can follow me at GearWow on Twitter, where I post way more political stuff than I should, and not nearly as much game stuff, but uh, hopefully the world will go back to normal soon, and you'll be seeing me do like DM tips and other stuff. Uh, I, uh, Zizava GM'd the uh, Green Cauldron uh, adventure module for us. And is our web mistress and handles the bonusroll.com and uh, most of our other sites. Uh, Halo and Honeycut are both members of the bonus cast and um, EQ. Sorry, my brain shut off on me there. Uh, EQ <laughs> is uh, our top moderator who has joined us for his very first um, bonus roll campaign. Uh, this is the wrap of bon the bonus roll, The Green Cauldron. Um, if you get a chance to play this, definitely play in this. Um, I think Agreed. that's about it. Anyone got anything to sign off for? I don't have to plug any Sirenscape or anything like that, so... I mean, I might put a shout-out later, see if there's any other um, creators I'm following or anything that'll let me run one more module in between while we're kind of getting relocated so I don't start a long campaign yet. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> um... <laughs> Keep an eye out on this time slot for a upcoming uh, GM's Brew return, uh, where I will be working with Ooh. Tux to design a uh, f a five room dungeon adventure, and then hopefully we'll be back to another limited campaign soon after that. Um, tomorrow is our second site agency campaign sixty first episode. Um, the players are edging closer to a fight with a serial killer angel, and I am curious who is going to die. <laughs> the, uh, fair dear. <laughs> Call it now. <laughs> I mean, but she realizes he's not dead. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone, take care. Have a great Saturday. Stay safe, stay healthy. Um, have fun in whatever way you can that doesn't hurt other people. Um, I can't think of anything else to drag this out. We're going to go ahead and call it. All right. Happy Spooktober. Oh, it is October. <laughs> Do not throw rocks at goblins this time of year, okay? It may be a child in disguise. Any other time of year, fine. Just not this now. Not, not now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm just thinking of, uh, what is that, Troll Tide or something like that from uh, Waterdeep. I need to go reread Waterdeep. Anyway, <laughs> okay, in-show card is up. They can't see us anymore. They can't see us. We're invisible. Can they still hear us? Yeah, they can still hear us, yes. Okay, 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 okay. All right, okay. <laughs>